Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. I got a few little topics to talk about today, but first, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here, and I'm sure you're wondering what in the world you're watching. Well, you're watching me walk. That's really what this channel is all about, is you're watching me walk. I do talk about stuff, I try to keep it interesting, but I basically, I, I walk. And the reason that it might be significant for you is that eight months ago, not only couldn't I walk like this, I could barely stand up for more than two and a half minutes without severe pain. Those of you who are returning to the channel, I'm glad you're back. I hope everyone's having a great week. Today is Wednesday for me. You guys will see this on Thursday. It's 60 degrees and sunny out today at about 1 in the afternoon, which makes it pretty nice here in North Carolina. Not quite as warm as I'd like it, but not too bad at that. Several, several little things to talk about today while I walk. First thing I was walking, watching a Sean Baker video. He chimed in on this, and it's been all over the internet today, so I got to have my little say on it as well. Because, you know, I talked about in yesterday's video what we're doing to our kids and the ridiculousness of some of the stuff they're trying to pull. Well, have you seen this idiocy about attempting to ban, or they're thinking about banning, or they're working towards banning indoor gas stoves? How stupid is that? There's no way you're gonna get me to believe that a gas stove is contributing to childhood diseases. I mean, maybe the gas fumes a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, but we've had gas stoves in houses for decades. And while there have been childhood diseases for decades, they're certainly a lot worse now in the last 20 years, 20, 30 years. Oh, this is 2020. I guess it goes back to the 70s, so 50 years. So, I, I yeah, I'm getting old. Sorry. But, uh, it's a lot worse since the new, I guess it was 79 or 80 when the food pyramid came in full force, might have been 78 or something, I don't remember, late 70s, early 80s, when they started telling us to eat all those servings of grain a day, and yet, you know, they're not rushing right out to talk about, about that, you know, it's, it's, I'm not exactly sure what the agenda is here, but there has to be one. Probably just making it more expensive for everybody, for whatever their reasons are. Because with the cost of fuel and everything going up and up and up, natural gas has always been the cheapest way to heat your home and, and cook and that kind of stuff. So, of course, it makes sense if they're trying to, for whatever reason, make things more expensive. They're going to ban the cheapest way of cooking. And boy, I guess that white Jeep was in a hurry because he just passed somebody in no passing zone. These people. But anyway... 
<coughs> excuse me. But that's uh, that's all I really have to say about that. That's just a a side note. I saw a couple people talking about this today, yesterday, the day before on their channels and I've talked about this many times but apparently we need to go over it again. We are not like the other side of the aisle and when I say that I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about the other end of the spectrum of eating. Y'all know I'm not dogmatic about the carnivore diet. I will offer suggestions. I will tell you, yes, that's carnivore, or no, that's not carnivore, as pertains to the strictness of the diet. But I will never tell you you can't have something. In fact, I've said many times, if you're getting results with what you're doing, there's no reason to change. None. It's when you, when what you're doing stops getting you results, that's where you have to examine what you're doing and maybe make a change. You know, is coffee carnivore? No. Is coffee good for me? Probably not, but we don't know. I mean, there's a handful of pseudoscience studies out there on coffee. And depending on who funded it is where you'll find your answer of whether or not coffee's good for you. The ones the coffee companies have have supported of course they're going to tell you coffee's great the ones that the anti-coffee people have funded they're going to tell you how bad it is for you just in my personal n equals one experiment because you all know i went without coffee back in october and i'm going without coffee again this month I don't really notice a difference either way. I like coffee. Especially on a cold day. It helps warm me up inside. I suppose hot water could do the same thing, but I like coffee. And if you like coffee, I'm not going to get all over you about that. The other end of the spectrum, the other side of the aisle, they're the ones that get all over their so-called comrades in arms for doing something that's not strictly speaking right on plan. Let's not be them. Let's not discourage somebody by saying, oh, well, you can't do that. That's not carnivore. You know, they, I'll, I'll take from Dr. Baker his example that he used today that, you know, you can really discourage people that way. You know, because people get it in their mind. Oh, crap. I slipped up and had a piece of candy. So since I've messed it up for today, I might as well have a whole bag of candy. Well, that's how people fall off the wagon. You know, I've told you guys this story many times. And whether or not she still has a little dark chocolate, I don't know. This has been several months ago now, but I have one of my subscribers that posted a comment and she said, I just can't shake it. I have a little piece of dark chocolate for my dessert when I finish my meal. And I got the impression that it was like two bites, so I'm assuming that she's having like you know how Hershey bars are divided into sections? I'm assuming that she's having like, you know, a two or three section bite of chocolate.
that's the way I took it. It could be a little more than that, it could be a little less than that, but it doesn't matter. Is chocolate carnivore? Absolutely not. Is chocolate good for you? Well, no, because it's pretty much just sugar. But, if that one little bite of sugar at the end of your meal keeps you carnivore for 99% of the time, and you're seeing increased health benefits from what you're doing, I say go for it. So let's, uh, let's remember that we are trying to be kind to each other, try to help each other, try and cheer each other on. We're not out here to be dogmatic. We're not out here to be judgmental. We're not trying to beat anybody down or trying to beat anybody into submission so that they throw their little bite of dark, dark chocolate away or throw their coffee away. We're just trying to encourage everybody because the more people get healthy, the more this way of eating will spread and it'll uh, bring some prices back down. I do have to tell you that I'm going to fail my part of the January challenge. I'm sorry. I got a Walmart order that I'm going to pick up tomorrow. And I'm not sure what's going on down here, but beef has gone up significantly. I was getting roasts for... Hang on. Truck coming. I was getting roast for between 450 and 550 a pound. And they're now up to about 750 a pound. So I'm not sure what's happened, but they're a little more expensive. I did order a couple of roasts. I ordered, rather than buying my bulk tube of ground beef that has also gone up, it's getting very close to $30 now instead of the $20 it was last time I bought it a couple of weeks ago. So that's, you know, a 50% increase in a couple of weeks. Well, I mean, it was 20, it was like 21 and some change, and now it's 28 and some change. So it's not quite a 50% jump, but it's, yeah, it's quite a jump. I was going to try some eggs again, but uh, wow, <laughs> those have really gotten expensive, but I found a loophole. The one thing that's never made me sick, so I'm going to give it another try just to get some eggs back in my diet. They sell a dozen eggs. I could get a dozen eggs for about 650. Well, for 250, I can get a half a dozen hard-boiled pre-peeled eggs. So I ordered a couple of those. Figuring I'm going to just salt them up and throw three of them on the side of my plate with each meal so I don't have to eat quite as big a, a roast. So I ordered slightly smaller roasts and some and some eggs. So the eggs are going to make me fail my lion diet January challenge. And because the cost of beef went up, I went over and looked at pork roasts and things like that and managed to get... I don't even now remember now what they are. They're like pork loin chops, boneless, and some boneless pork ribs. But I got two packages of pork. And I'm going to have those at some point in the next week and a half as well. Because they were still about two and a quarter to 250 a pound. But I still got plenty of butter in my 
fridge, so I'll just cut up some chunks of butter to add some fat to the to the pork when I cook that. So, you know, I'd said I was going to stay lion diet for this month, and I was going to stay lion diet all the way throughout. Well, I don't have enough freezer space in my camper to buy a great big pile of beef and get those big discounts. So, to supplement things, I, I had to buy a little bit of pork. Because those are, it's a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper and of course there are some cows in fact there's some cows in the field right back over there but from everything I've been able to see this part of North Carolina is primarily pig farming so perhaps that's why there's the pork is so much cheaper here because I don't recall in Nebraska pork being that much cheaper than beef but it's well about a third the cost right now so that's where we're at and you know one of the things I wanted to talk about regardless of what challenges you're doing or beef butter bacon and eggs or lion diet or keto to keto vor or whatever if something happens that's going to break the budget, go with the cheaper meats if you have to. I mean, don't worry about disappointing anybody or even disappointing yourself because you didn't quite make it through a challenge. We got to do what we got to do, and what we got to do is get better health. That's the main reason we're doing this, getting better health. Not for some silly challenge. We're doing this because we want to get healthy. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And to steal another one from Dr. Baker, I laughed a lot. It's, it's not exactly what I've said before, but he said it in a way that just, I busted a gut. It was funny. You know, yes grass finished grass fed grass finished beef is obviously the gold standard but not everybody can afford that and then what he said was even if your cows were fed donuts their entire life eating a cow fed that had fed on donuts is still many times healthier for you than eating the donuts yourself. And that's really true. And I've, I'm not going to get into this too a whole lot because we've talked about the difference between grass finished and grain finished several times. And that's just a, a nutrition versus cost choice you're going to have to make for yourself. But the, the main thing I want to talk about is something I don't really know how to talk about. I don't know how to answer because I don't do it. And as somebody asked me if uh, full-fat Greek yogurt is okay on a carnivore diet. Now, of course, that still goes back to if you're getting results and you're eating that, then it's perfectly fine because I'm not dogmatic about that. The thing here is dairy. Some people can tolerate it, some people can't. I don't seem to have that much of a problem with dairy. I had that one little bout where butter was bothering me, but it doesn't seem to do that anymore. But that's the only dairy I use. I don't buy cheese. I don't... Uh, I don't do yogurts or Greek yogurts or sour cream or heavy whipping cream or any of that stuff. It's 
So, I guess all I can say is give it a try and see what happens. Because it all circles back to we're not being dogmatic here. Strictly speaking is full fat Greek yogurt carnivore. I don't know because I don't know how it's made. I think it is. I've heard other people talking about it. But I can't say yes or no. But we're all adults here. We can eat whatever we want. If we decide we're going to do B, 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 E, and D, meaning beef, butter, bacon, eggs, and donuts, and that's the, di that's the diet we've decided to do, you're an adult. You can do whatever you want. Now, depending on how many donuts you're having a day, I wouldn't recommend that diet. But if you're doing it and getting results, then go right ahead, because we're not being dogmatic here. However, I will say, adding donuts to an otherwise carnivore diet is not such a good idea, because the last, the last thing, question that I got in the comments that I want to cover right now and I, I understand their confusion because I've wor I have watched Professor K's videos on the Randall cycle many times over trying to grasp it. And while he's explaining it, it makes absolute perfect sense to me. I go, yeah, okay, I got that. And then the second I shut the video off, I'm like, what the heck did I just watch? So... In my usual retired truck driver common sense fashion, I'm going to try and break it down for you as simply as I can from my point of view. And I've said this a couple of times on the channel before, but I wanted to go over it again because we always have new viewers and I like to answer questions as they come up. So the bottom line, as far as I'm able to concern, as, as I'm able to figure out. And if I'm wrong about this, feel free to comment down in the comments and let me know what I got wrong. Because I've always said I, I'm not a scientist. I don't really do science. I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. But the bottom line of the Randall cycle, Randall cycle is fat good carbs bad fat and carbs together deadly and I think that pretty much sums it up because I was watching I forget who he was hammering on but uh I was watching a Professor K video, and, you know, if all you want to do is lose weight, there's lots of ways to lose weight. Did you know that the sugar diet is actually a thing? The rice diet is actually a thing? You can lose weight, because on an all-sugar diet or an all-rice diet, you're getting a ton of carbs but you're not getting any fat. And because it takes both to activate the Randall cycle and a whole bunch of other sciency science stuff I don't understand, you can actually lose weight. But we're not after just losing weight on this channel with the carnivore diet. We're after losing fat in a healthy way while improving ourselves to as close to optimal health as we can get. And a sugar diet or a rice diet, much like the diet they profess on the other end of the spectrum, the other side of the aisle, 
is very devoid of nutrients. Now the sugar diet even more so, and the rice diet even more so. So it'll happen faster. But all of those diets are so void of nutrients that we will eventually encounter severe health problems, even if we manage to lose weight. So, you know, losing weight, while well, good, and one of the markers of health, if you wake up in the morning tomorrow 60 pounds lighter, but you feel like crap, you're so weak you can't get out of the chair, you haven't really done yourself any good, have you? Whereas, on the carnivore diet, you know, there's some argument out there over, over organ meat. I don't do them, knowingly. You know, there may get a few tossed into the cheap ground beef I buy. But, uh, you know, some people say you should, some people say you shouldn't. Electrolytes. If you're not getting enough salt, you're going to have problems. But there's, you know, a lot of little nitpicky things that we argue about in this space. But for the most part, a big fatty cut of meat like a ribeye, or even, you know, you take a, a pork chop or a pork loin or a chicken thigh or even a chicken breast, and you dump butter over top of that stuff to up the fat content. There's nothing wrong with any of that. And you will have the proper nutrients. Plus or minus a couple things that you may or may not have to supplement. Depending on where you're at, if you're basically north of the Mason-Dixon line, that sun's probably not going to have enough power to give you all the vitamin D you need. So in the winter time, you may have to take a little bit of a vitamin D supplement. Depending on where your food is sourced, you may have to add a drop or two of iodine drops to your food every day just to make sure you're getting enough. And iodine is one of those things that I recommend everybody try once because if you try it and you were short on iodine, you'll notice a difference in how you feel almost immediately. But if you weren't short on iodine and you didn't need it, having an excess of it doesn't do anything bad to you. Your body just flushes it out and you... Your body will just flush it out. You'll pee it away. Not that big a deal. So yeah, I think I've covered everything I need to cover here. And I've been rambling on for quite some time now. So let's go ahead and cue the music.
Okay, let's cut the music. Thank you. So I guess the bottom line of this video is don't be like the other guys. We're the carnivore space. We're the nice guys. We're the friendly guys and gals. Let's just relax and try to help support each other. And if you can't support each other, just don't don't say anything. I mean, because you don't know. Just like I talked about in yesterday's video, or it might have been the day before, about one of the reasons I keep doing this is because I don't know who's watching, and I don't know who might hit the play button next. So I keep going. Don't get dogmatic on people, because... You might be the one comment that either encourages them to give it a go and fix their health, or you might be that one comment that discourages them and they just say, the heck with it, I can't do this. And if I'd gotten comments like that when I first found Dante's channel and Dr. Barry's channel, I'm pretty confident I'd be dead now. We're pretty close to it. Because I was definitely circling the drain eight months ago. And now I'm not. So let's keep it positive out there, folks. Let's have a great day. Don't forget to get out there be 1% better. I will see you tomorrow.